Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sean and today I'm going to be talking about Warfarin, also called Coumadin. If you're watching this video, you may have just been prescribed this medication for a new condition that was diagnosed by your doctor. You may have a lot of questions whether it's safe, how long you need to take it, do you really have to check your INR every month? If you don't know what an INR is, no worries. We're going to talk about that in this video. So with this video, I hope to instill some confidence in this medication for you and make you feel confident going forward with your your health. Why listen to me on this subject? I was a US Public Health Service pharmacist for over five years. We ran a Coumadin clinic. I've helped hundreds of patients with this medication, making sure they monitor it safely, get the right dosage, and prescribe the right dosage for them, and have helped a lot of people with warfarin. If you'd like to learn more about my background and credentials, that information is available on my channel, and you can find a little bit more about my background there. So to start, I just want to present to you with the six major points that I'm gonna touch on. If you feel like you wanna jump forward to one of those topics, feel free to do that so that you can get the information that you need. The first thing that I'm gonna talk about is a little bit of the history of warfarin. It's really interesting how it started and um, where it came from. Next, I'm gonna talk about the what, how, and why. So what warfarin is used for, how it works, and then why we prescribe it. Next, we'll talk about how to take the warfarin. After that, we'll talk about the side effects that you can expect and how we safely monitor warfarin. Then we're gonna talk about interactions. So warfarin is very well known to interact with a lot of foods and medications. So we're gonna talk about food and drug interactions. And then finally, we'll end on how long you can expect to take this medication based on your situation. So it's actually really good to know that warfarin has been around for over 70 years. Millions of people have used it and it's a safe and effective medication when used properly. So it's kind of funny how warfarin was discovered. It actually was discovered by some farmers in Wisconsin. What they noticed was that some of their cows were eating some hay and they actually found that their cows had died and had bled out. And it turns out the hay was infected with a certain type of fungus. Now scientists later on discovered that that fungus was creating a substance that we then turned into Coumadin or Warfarin. I remember drugs have both a brand name and a generic name. Coumadin is the brand name and Warfarin is the generic name. Warfarin got its name from the Wisconsin Research Foundation, so WRF. So they kind of used that uh, when they were naming Warfarin, which also has a WRF in it. So that's where Warfarin came from. So what are the conditions that Warfarin can treat? Well, I'm gonna talk about the two most common conditions that Warfarin is used for that you may be experiencing yourself. So the first one is called venous thromboembolism. Now this is an umbrella term for two conditions that are very common, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, DVT and PEs. So those refer to a clot in your legs or a clot developing in your lungs, which when you get a clot, that's going to impede blood flow and can cause serious medical conditions and even death. Those are definitely two things that warfarin can help treat. Another very common condition that warfarin is used for is called atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation means that the heart is beating irregularly. When the heart beats irregularly, that means a clot can form because the blood is pooling inside the heart. So when we prescribe warfarin, what warfarin is doing is helping prevent that clot formation. So warfarin actually inhibits this enzyme that's inside your liver that normally would create these coagulation factors. So when a clot develops, these factors uh, come together to tell your blood to form a clot so that usually the body can repair itself. In the situation with developing a leg clot, that clot can actually break loose and travel up to your lungs and block blood flow to your lungs, uh, which can be very dangerous and could lead to death. In the case of atrial fibrillation, when your heart is beating irregularly, that gives blood inside the heart the opportunity to stagnate and pool. Now, when that happens, a clot can form inside the heart and then can actually be pumped out of the heart into your brain and that can lead to a stroke which can be deadly. So warfarin is preventing clot formation and preventing those dangerous situations with a clot in your lungs or a clot in your brain. 
So before the advent of warfarin, people with these conditions didn't really have a lot of options. They could take aspirin to help prevent these issues and, and potentially death. But once warfarin came around, it turned out warfarin was much more effective versus aspirin. So warfarin is actually a very useful drug and is a very useful tool that we want to use. It can really significantly decrease your risk of clots as much as up to 60%. And it can also decrease your risk of of mortality or death by 25%. So taking this medication is very important if you have these conditions. Now let's talk about how you take warfarin. So warfarin is usually gonna come in a tablet form and the dose can range from 2.5 milligrams all the way up to 10 milligrams. Usually most people will start at five milligrams once a day. So you'll take one tablet a day every day to help prevent clot formation in your body. Now, it doesn't matter what time of day you take it, you just wanna be consistent. So if you choose to take the medication in the morning, just take it every morning. Now, how a person responds to warfarin can vary a lot. It can vary on your genetics, food that you eat, and also the medications that you're taking, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. But warfarin is very finicky and it's very important to take it consistently. Now, when you first start taking warfarin, it can actually take up to five to seven days to reach its therapeutic effect or reach its full potential in your body. So when you start taking it, we wait about a week to start checking your INR. You may have heard your doctor mention that they'll have to check an INR. So what does INR stand for? That stands for International Normalized Ratio. That's essentially a fancy term to determine how long it takes your blood to clot. So we actually want to monitor your INR to make sure that we are using the warfarin safely. Remember, I mentioned that warfarin can be very variable depending on the person. So we actually have to prick your finger and check your your blood to make sure that we are using it safely and that it's in the desired range. So usually with the INR, there's a goal range that we want the INR to be at to make sure that it's both effective and safe. Most people are going to have an INR range between two and three. So what does that mean? That means when we prick your finger and we check your blood in the INR machine, we want the number that shows up to fall between two and three. Ideally, we would want that to be 2.5, but if you're anywhere between two and three, that means your blood is properly anticoagulated and that we are being safe with the medication. Now, some people do have to have a different INR range, but that's more rare in people with heart valves and other conditions. Now you might be wondering, how often do I have to prick my finger and check your INR? Most people actually have to come in and check it every month. Some people who have been very stable with their INR over time can check their INR every three months and some people every six months, but that's more rare. Again, you always wanna be talking with your doctor or your Coumadin clinic to see what's the best follow-up for you. Now, when taking warfarin, remember, warfarin is preventing clot formation, and so that's making the blood not clot as quickly. Really what we're trying to do is prevent clot formation but also avoid bleed. So we want to find that healthy middle when taking warfarin as a medication. So the most common side effect of warfarin is, you guessed it, bleeding. So we're always monitoring for signs of bleeding but then we also want to monitor for signs of a clot developing. So I want to explain the signs and symptoms that you'll watch out for for both a bleed and for both a clot so that you can be right in the middle healthy and safe. So when monitoring for signs of bleeding, I go from head to toe. So starting with your head, a sign of bleeding might be a bloody nose, or you might notice if you're brushing your teeth, you have bleeding gums. Some bleeding signs that you might notice if it was going on in your, in your stomach, which is very important, are coughing up blood or vomiting blood or blood in your urine or stool. So you always wanna be looking in the toilet to see if there's any blood in there. So those are the major signs of bleeding to watch out for. Now, some major signs of clots starting from head to toe are if you notice dizziness, confusion, or a extreme headache that was very painful. We always say it's like the worst headache you've ever experienced. Experience, those could be signs of a stroke and you'd wanna to go to the emergency room immediately. Now, a sign of a clot in your chest area might be shortness of breath, chest pain. It might hurt when you're breathing. Those could be signs of a clot developing in your lungs. Remember, I called it before a pulmonary embolism or PE. That could be a sign that a clot is developed there. And again, that would be an emergent situation and you'd wanna to go to the ER. 
Now a sign of a clot in your legs might be leg swelling, pain or tenderness in your leg, redness where the swelling is at. Again, that could be a sign of a clot that is developed in your leg and you'd wanna go and seek care at that point. Now, if you ever did notice signs of bleeding and it goes away right away, then you wouldn't have to go to the ER. But if it goes away and it's not stopping, that would be a time to seek care. Another thing you wanna watch out for is if you had an accident or fell and hit a part of your body, especially your head. Now, if you fell down and hit your head, you would wanna go to the urgent care to make sure that you didn't develop a bleed inside your brain, which could be very dangerous. Now, you might develop bruising by not knocking your body on objects around the house. But if the bruise goes away, you have nothing to worry about. If the bruise got bigger or was growing, that would be a sign to seek care. One final thing, if you have any surgeries or operations coming up, you always wanna let your doctor know that you're taking warfarin so that they're aware because again, this medication can cause bleeding. So now that I've talked about side effects and how to monitor warfarin, now I wanna talk about the interactions that I mentioned before. So there's primarily drug interactions and food interactions. So let's first talk about the drug interactions. Anytime you start a new prescription medication or if you take any over-the-counter medications, you always wanna check those medications with your doctor or a pharmacist to make sure that they don't interact with your warfarin. So when it comes to over-the-counter medications, you definitely want to avoid NSAIDs. That stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. I know that's a mouthful, but that includes ibuprofen, naproxen, and aspirin. The brand names of that would be Advil or Motrin and Aleve. Now, if you're taking a baby aspirin, that's kind of a special situation and it might be okay to take the baby aspirin with warfarin, but again, you always want to be checking with your doctor about that. Now, the issue with NSAIDs is that when you take them together with warfarin, it can increase your chances of bleeding. We definitely don't want that, so that's why you want to avoid taking NSAIDs. If you have pain or fever, please take Tylenol, which is also called acetaminophen, instead. Now, anytime you start a new prescription medication, there's a possibility that it could interact with the warfarin. Not every prescription interacts with warfarin, but some common ones that do include antibiotics, medications that are used to treat seizures, and if you have atrial fibrillation, you might be taking a medication that helps with your rhythm of the heart and that might interact with the warfarin. So those are some common scenarios. There's a lot of them, but again, you always want to be checking with your doctor or pharmacist to make sure drugs don't interact with your warfarin. So that's drug interactions. Now let's talk about the food. In general, you may have heard that you want to avoid vitamin K rich foods. So why vitamin K? Well, again, warfarin acts on an enzyme in your liver that helps prevent the creation of clotting factors. Vitamin K fights that process and so therefore can kind of battle against the warfarin. So you might be thinking, well, what foods have vitamin K? The general rule is any green leafy food like salads, lettuce, spinach, and broccoli. If it's green and leafy, it's likely that it has vitamin K. Not all foods that are green and leafy have vitamin K, but in general they do. And there are still some foods like cauliflower that do have vitamin K, so you have to watch out for that. So it doesn't mean you can't eat these foods, we just always say you want to be consistent because these foods can battle with the warfarin and can make your INR fluctuate. One common question that a lot of people ask is how long do I have to be on this medication? Well that's going to depend on your condition. So remember I said that two common reasons to take this medication are for venous thromboembolism, which includes DVT and PEs, and atrial fibrillation. So if you have venous thromboembolism, it's typical that you'll take this medication anywhere from three to six months, maybe longer. If you had a situation that was provoked and you developed a clot in your leg or lungs, then it might be a shorter duration of treatment, so maybe just three months. So what does provoked mean? Well, maybe you were driving across the country in a truck and you developed a clot in your leg because you were sitting all day. That would be provoked. Or maybe you twisted your ankle or broke a bone and that provoked a clot. Then we know where the clot came from from and you don't have to take the warfarin for as long. But if you developed a clot in your lungs and we don't really know where it came from, that might mean you need to take it for a longer period for up to six months, maybe even longer. Now, if you've developed multiple clots in your leg and or lungs, you may be at risk for developing clots in the future. So people who have had multiple clots likely need to take warfarin for a long time, sometimes lifelong. If you have atrial fibrillation, usually people have to take warfarin for the rest of their life, but that can change depending on your 
major situation. Some people will actually get a procedure to fix the rhythm in their heart, and if that's the case, then you may not have to take warfarin for the rest of your life. Also remember that not everybody with atrial fibrillation should be taking warfarin. There's certain risk factors that we look at to determine if the benefit of warfarin exceeds the risk of taking it. Again, it's always important to talk with your doctor about if taking warfarin is right for you. So there you have it. Those are the main things that you need to know about warfarin. So just as a quick summary, warfarin helps prevent clot formation and helps prevent the risk of death from conditions like DVT, PE, or atrial fibrillation. It's very important to take warfarin every day and to monitor it appropriately by checking your IM. Are. You really need to be mindful of the medications that you take, any upcoming procedures or surgeries, and also the food that you eat. If you have these things in mind, you'll truly minimize your risk of having any side effects from the medication and should have all the benefits. I really hope you found this video valuable. If you liked it, please give me a like and a subscribe, and that helps me make more videos for people like you that need that additional drug information. I know drugs can be confusing and they can be scary, but if you have the right info and the right preparation, then you will definitely be okay and live a healthy life. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.